Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham and the subject here is Photoshop's brushes. Many of the editing tools we use from the toolbox work via a brush. Now as you would expect from Photoshop you do get a huge variety of brushes available to you and you can make your own too. Now I suggest that this is a subject that we can safely push to the end of the Photoshop learning curve. We can ignore the brush options for now because you're going to find that a basic soft edge brush is going to meet all of your needs. On the rare time when a soft edge brush is not appropriate, it's likely to be exactly the same brush but perhaps with a hard edge. I'm going to be referring to a standard soft edge brush quite a bit throughout these videos and you'll rarely see me change it if at all. However there are one or two aspects of the brushes that are worth dealing with here. To do that I'm going to create a new blank canvas in white. I'm going to go to File New. I'll accept this one 1920 pixels by 1080 down here I've got the background content set to white so I'm quite happy to select that and straight away I'll select just one of the basic brushes from the toolbox remember if we click and hold we've got quite a few but I just want the one from the top now the one thing we're going to be changing constantly is the size of the brush because we need to adjust the size of the brush relative to the work we're doing and of course sometimes the image is going to be fully on screen as this blank canvas is and sometimes it's going to be hugely enlarged. Now I can always go to the top left of the screen and in this drop down area here I can choose the size of my brush. As I use the slider I can see the size in pixels but I can't see the size of the brush until I move it onto the picture surface. So it's not a very convenient way of changing the size of the brush. I'm going to suggest there's a much easier way and it works well in Photoshop and also in Adobe Camera Raw. We have two square bracket keys to the right of the letter P on the keyboard. If I tap the one on the right it will increase my brush size and if I tap the one on the left it will decrease the brush size. Now that's going to be one of those shortcuts we do use over and over again. So within my videos if I refer to a standard soft edge brush what am I referring to? Well there's a good chance you probably already have a standard soft edge brush selected but if you select your brush and go to the top of the screen I'm going to click this little icon here and some options open up on the right now what we can do here, if we look into the brushes here, I think this is probably a nice easy way to view the soft ones. You can see that each of these are very soft. Now I can pick one of these, but I can also do it through the brush settings. Because if I scroll down here, I'm going to see a soft brush. When I select that brush, what we're seeing is the size, which we know we can change with those bracket keys. The hardness here is shown as zero and the spacing that seems to be pretty standard at 25%. Now if I move on to my picture and I make my brush a lot bigger you can see the size whizzing across there. I don't want it quite that big but something like that and when I click there you can quite clearly see the effect of the soft edge brush. Now you'll also notice that when the brush is big the soft area is greater. When I make the brush really small we've still got a soft edge brush but it doesn't look quite so soft. But it actually is if we look carefully. Let's go back into the option for a moment because if we were to select this one for example the first thing we'll notice here is the hardness goes up to 100%. So if I make my brush bigger now and click well we can see the obvious difference. If I was using the brush and I was using it a hundred times I'm going to be using this one with the soft edge 
99 times and this one perhaps once. So you get the idea that a standard soft edge brush is going to meet all of our photographic needs. Now the only other option with regard to brushes that I think may be worth mentioning here is opacity and flow which are options that pop up at the top of the screen when we select the brush. Now for most of the time that I've been working in Photoshop I've been using my opacity set to 100% and I control how the brush works by reducing the flow. Now some say that the better way is to use the flow at 100% and make your adjustments using the opacity. Well to be honest I don't think it matters very much at all. But let me demonstrate some differences between the two and you can make your own decision. So I have my brush tool selected and I have a standard soft edge brush and you can see a little symbol of it up there on the top left. I'm going to leave the opacity set to 100% for a moment and I'm going to reduce the flow. Now we can do that using this slider here but it's another one of those sliders that can be quite inconvenient and there's a much better way of adjusting the flow if we want to use it. We have a little icon here and we can click it and it looks like a little button that we've just pressed. If I do that I can change the flow using the number keys on the keyboard as well as the slider. So if I wanted to use 10% flow I can hit the number 1 key if I want to use 40% I can use the 4 key, 8 for 80% all the way up the keyboard, 9 for 90 and 0 will take us back to 100. And if we want a midway point and that's going to be something we may want from time to time say 5% for really delicate work then I just touch the 0, 5 on the keyboard in relative quick succession and now I've got 5% selected. So using the keyboard shortcut I'm going to touch the 3 key to set my flow rate to 30% and I'm going to draw a square on screen. Now as I do that as I cross over you'll see that the tone starts to build up. You can probably see it more on that corner and that corner. But if I were to do this again and was to continue going round I would build up until in the end I would have solid black. Now let me demonstrate what happens if we do this the other way around. So with that indentation made I can hit the zero key to set that to 100. I can remove that and we're going to now set that using the same method. So now I can hit the three key and it changes the opacity to 30%. So when I draw my square and I go over again of course I'm restricting the tool to just a 30% opacity. Now I find it more convenient, more controllable and of course it's something I've got used to to work the other way around. So let me touch the zero key to reset the opacity. I'll just click my little button here once more and I'm going to bring my flow down to something really small like 1% because it's not uncommon to do a bit of work in an area evaluate the effect of whatever it was we were doing on the image with what I've done with the brush and if I feel it's not enough then I can build it and I can build it and it depends how fast I want to build it dependent upon what I set in my flow so if I hit that 0, 05 key then of course as I apply my brush more than once it builds up rather fast. Now I hope you've enjoyed this video which has ended up slightly longer than I anticipated. I think we're just approaching 10 minutes. 
Does that say something about the complexity of Photoshop's brushes? Or perhaps me talking too much? I'll leave you to decide that.